Hey guys, just real quick, I just want to let you guys know, you can find me at patreon.com forward slash Jonathan Rector. All your financial support there goes directly back into making more content for you guys and you ladies out there. And remember, you can always cancel your subscription at any time. And if you are one of my Patreons, thank you so much. Your help gets me closer to making my personal comics and my dreams. <laughs> My dreams come to life. Seriously, though, head on over there if you guys are interested. And um, anybody that gives any money at all, if it's, it is something that you're interested in, uh, you do get access to my pencil brushes that I use in Manga Studio 5 EX for free. And there's five of those guys. So subscribe today if you're interested in it. Share if you're not. Maybe one of your friends might be interested in it. I appreciate all of it. Thank you again, and uh, enjoy the video. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Questions and Answers. Uh, for those of you that are uh, a little unfamiliar with exactly what this is, I, I know, Questions and Answers, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, however, the amount of videos I'm putting out there, it's not tons, but I can't get back to all of your questions. And you guys have some really, really awesome questions that I always want to get back to. And sometimes I just can't answer the volume of them. So, that's the whole purpose of this show, is to go back in between uh, Questions and Answers episodes and answer some of the questions that are posted there as well as share some of the the feedback you guys give uh, so that I can share it to other people uh, and that way we can just spread all the good stuff and you guys will see all that when we get in there and uh, before I start answering the questions what I'm drawing on right here is for my personal project Castle Dracula uh, I'm trying to do some concept work here for uh, some villains and uh, it started off with I'm not sure what bad guys I want to populate this mini comic with, and I was doing this kind of character here where it's like a spider with a with a man on top of it. I know the spider, <laughs> but uh, maybe like a zombie thing, a spider guy with a spider body thing. And as I'm going, I'm like, that just doesn't feel right. Then you'll see me go into making uh, bat peons, and it just, I just wasn't feeling a lot of it. But eventually, I got to something where I started to really enjoy it, and the main reason I got to that was because I started doing. Uh, a little bit of reference, which is something I should have did in the beginning, uh, but I'll, I don't want to, I'll just go into it. When I don't look at reference, and why I suggest you don't look at reference, when you're concepting out uh, design and things like that, at least at some point, usually in the beginning I do that, just because what I'm doing is tapping into my own information, what I think these things should look like. And I personally get some really cool ideas and some things, but they... It never really comes to completion from there, but what it is is an awesome stepping stone. So that the next step that I do is, uh, in the case of this, I just do a Google image search, image search of bats, and I just leave that open up on my second monitor, and I go back to doing this, using the reference as an anchor, and that way I can pull from design that I've already pulled from myself, mix it with what a bat looks like, and hopefully that might turn into something. And what ends up happening is I come up with a design that's very to me it's cool because it solves two issues I was having with the script and I'm finding as somebody who's getting my feet wet in learning how to you know just create personal comics with the full breadth of what that means uh, being able to write the script thumbnail it, draw it let alone all the marketing that's got to go behind it and things like that so that people can find it and get interested in it that writing is very hard as it should be However, using my art, I'm able to, in my eyes anyway, and whether or not it'll all come together, that's something else that we can talk about, but being able to draw something helps bring story into my story. Uh, for a quick example, you'll see as we get there, uh, I end up coming up with a character that fills this role that I needed, and his name is the Bat King, and as I was drawing him, I don't know why, but I, I just, I had this idea of him missing a finger. And then that started sparking some background story for that character that it was just like, oh, of course, that that's what I need. That's what I needed, this little anchor, this thing. Um, anyway, you, we'll get into that uh, as more Castle Dracula stuff comes out. I hope you guys are enjoying the stuff that I'm putting out there. Uh, the very few minutes that I get every other day to put into this project is, 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 man, it's fun. I'm telling you that stuff right now. Anyway, back to the questions and answers. So the first group that we're going to answer comes back from the questions and answers episode 2 video and Austin Draws said do you have any advice for a 13 year old artist and have you seen the image revolution it tells a story of how image was founded 
uh, how it was basically founded. I've heard so many uh, good things about that video. It's on my list of things to watch. I think I've watched clips on YouTube. And from what I know about Image, right back from its early days, is what I think a lot of people say, which is all positive, inspiring, and it's, it's great. It's fantastical stuff. And I'm finding, at least over the last five, five, maybe ten years anyway, that it seems like web comics has that same push, that same feeling. Uh, it's just, it's not backed by like a huge company like Image and stuff like that. But no, I do plan on watching that and uh, it's very motivating for sure. But for any advice for a 13 year old artist, you're still very young um, and I'm not sure you know exactly what you want to do with your art. Uh, if you do, do just that. And some people might get a little mixed on that kind of advice where it's you are still young so you want to do comic books so that's cool but you like video games you want to do concept art and backgrounds and maybe you like to draw vehicles and space but you might hear other people say you know like that's great but don't lock yourself in on just photoshop or something grab a brush grab some canvas paint learn watercolor learn, learn sculpture i can't personally say that's a good idea myself uh, I was very set on comic books, and then I deviated into sort of a animation and concept art phase, where that's the stuff that I really wanted to do. Concept art has always been like a first love of mine, uh, but comic books, you guys hear me talk about all the time, just the fact that you can come up with a world, and you can be the sole creator of an entire idea, story, script, everything, that's that's powerful. And the amount of time that it takes to do it, usually, well, I'm not going to say that, because some people, they, they do, they can hammer out animations like, like that. But uh, if you're 13, and the only advice I would give you, regardless of what I just said, is continue to draw, don't stop, get good habits set in now while you can, and those good habits can be, I know you don't want to hear it, but wake up 10 minutes early, uh, even if it's school or something like that, and you're waking up at like 6 a.m. anyway, get up at 5.50 and have the sketchbook next to your desk and just scribble, just stuff. Like, look what's on the screen right now, just scribble that. Just scribble it. Doesn't even, it doesn't have to make sense. Uh, for me, what that does, the earlier in my day that I'm able to just do scribbles like that, I always find that I have a more positive day in that I not necessarily get more work done, but I do work. Um, there are the days where I get up and it's like, you know, I got to get ready for work and all that stuff. And it, it's just, it seems like it sets into motion that delayed of, that delayed spark of, okay, it's, you, you get to draw today, you know? And it, it's always in the back of my mind of like later in the day, I, I, I can't wait to sit down to draw. But I don't know what it is. It's just for me. So get in the good habit of just drawing as much as you can whenever you can. Um, and like I say, just to wrap it up, if you happen to know the field you want to go in, Start pushing for that. Do research. Don't just draw comic books if you want to be in comic books. Look, look, like spend some time reading news and looking at the history and stuff. See if it actually is a field you want to get into. Um, on the surface, comic books, they always look like they're, they're like I just said, they're the, the, to me, one of the most awesome things in the world to being able to do is a comic book. And, you know, I always just thought it was that. And then the more I've been in this field, the more it's like, <laughs> it's still fun. But that illusion of it's just, awesome all the time goes away pretty quick in in the fact that it's so much work and just like anything that you're lucky enough to be able to do it has to have some baggage with it and thank god it's just working because that's making us better anyway so i'm gonna move on to the next one the next one is from uh, the pre-recorded live stream of july 10th 2014 and I just want to say, uh, this one's from Nazra Saya. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, you and a few other people, they keep asking questions, so I appreciate you guys' support. Um, and it helps make the issue a little bit easier. <laughs> so Nazra's asking, have you read All New X-Men by Brian Michael Bendis and Stuart Immonen? No, I have not. Uh, I don't really follow X-Men books. I've never, I was never really an X-Men fan. There's certain characters in, in the universe that I enjoy, but uh, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's just because the roster is always so huge. Uh, I never feel like I get to find out about the characters. Um, so it's just like, it's great action stuff. And, you know, you get to see Wolverine slashing around and Cyclops blast and stuff. And Magneto is always cool. But, uh, no, right now, the only books on my pull file are Invincible, which I think is one of the best comic books out right now. And I highly recommend more people give it a shot, even though they're up into the hundreds now of issues. Uh, I mean, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, obviously. And I think one more... I can't remember. I had, a, like, the Batman, Superman, uh, I had X-Men as well, but it just starts to feel, I don't know, I just, that's probably another question, but it just feels like I'm just throwing money away to read something every week that's subpar to me. Um, there's got to be a, a sweet mixture of at least good story in my eyes with good art in my eyes, and then they just kind of mix. And when it mixes, it's, you know it when you like it. Um... Okay, so the next question is from Super Awesome Toys. <laughs> Great name. I watched this episode late last night, and you mentioned that using a felt nib for the Wacom was better than using a plastic nib. I was thinking of buying a felt nib pack, and today I realized that the Intuos 4 came packed with felt nibs. I just tried one out, and man, the difference between felt and plastic is night and day. My lines are smoother, and the nib just glides off the tablet. Thanks, man. It feels sort of like a <laughs> an infomercial uh, reply there, but yes. What I had talked about was something that was brought up in the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics of... Uh, getting felt nibs because the plastic ones start tearing up your your or can start tearing up your your tablet. Uh, the tablet I use actually at work on my day job when I'm doing concept art, it's starting to get scratched there because I don't use the full size of the tablet. Um, in that DC Comics guide, what what he suggested doing and it took a little bit getting used to is if you can imagine your tablet if you have one in front of you, and you just pick a corner and just shrink it, like, pretend you still got that ratio, and you shrink it to, like, a square or a rectangle in, like, the top right corner, so that it's covering, like, maybe a quarter of it, maybe even a little bit less, that's all I use, and the idea for that is you get faster lines, and when you zoom out, when you just do, like, flicks of your wrist and stuff, you can get smoother lines, you get used to it, but you're continually working in that area, it's not like you're going over the entire surface, so it gets scratched up so fast, and I had to actually move that square that I told you, down to like the bottom right because I tore a hole through it. And when I went to the felt nibs, it didn't necessarily get rid of that, but it gave it just a little extra, I don't know, it just felt not like drawing on glass or it wasn't too, too smooth. So I'm glad, Super Awesome Toys, you enjoyed it. I highly recommend anybody else that uses tablets to at least check it out. I believe most tablets, especially if you've got the Intuos series, they come with a felt nib. Just that, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to break your pen or anything. Just try it out see what you think. Um, and that's especially for those of you that might not like the feel of, like, the, the, the generic plastic one that comes out. Now, in saying that, uh, let me just see here. I believe my Cintiq, it still feels like it's a plastic tip on there. It doesn't feel like it's a rubber nib. I could be wrong, um, but it's the default one that came with that. I I haven't tried any other nibs or anything for the Cintiq, uh, but that is something I'm going to be looking into trying as well. And the mighty Jake Norway, no way, sorry, uh, he said that uh, this was still in that video we were talking about paths, and he said paths are in Manga Studio 4 EX, and uh, he provided the link. So I have that in the comment bar below. So if you guys are using Manga Studio 4, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming most people are migrated over to 5 now, but if you are still using 4, there's this really awesome tutorial. I checked it out. It's really cool. Um, check that. And there's got to be something. If not, like, Manga Studio 5 has to have a pen tool. And, and you know, I'm in there all the time, and I'm looking at it right now, and I, I don't see it right away. And I'm surprised by that. And if there isn't, they really need one in an update. It just, it'll just make this product, and most people probably don't even use paths, but anyway, if that's your interest in that, check in the comment bar below. Nazra Seya is asking, when you're reading a comic book, do you judge by art, by the art standpoint, or by the writing standpoint? Uh, me, myself, I am comfortable with art, but I cannot tell the difference between bad writers and good writers. Are there any set rules for writers? For myself, I'm definitely in the camp of I usually just get a book based on the art. Now in saying that, there are certain books that I'll buy regardless, such as Ninja Turtles. Uh, there's a lot of artists jumping on and off on that. They have miniseries and stuff. But I just love that brand. I think everybody's got like a favorite something. Uh, you might like My Little Pony. So you get every comic book that's My Little Pony, right? And there's nothing wrong. There's a, that's okay. But when it just comes up to like, oh, I want an X-Men book, like we were talking a little bit earlier, uh, I'll look at the cover, and you know, that's the cover's the cover. Doesn't matter. Usually, most cover artists aren't the artists inside. 
and then I'll open it up, and it's kind of like, how does it look? How does it feel? Because I do have time to read the speech bubbles, but comic books, they're, they're read like that. And I always feel like if I start reading one at the store to see if it's something I want to buy, uh, you know, why even buy it? Because I just read it sort of thing. And the art has to grab me. It has to make me get interested in what's going on. And based on that, then I can read it. And I agree with you. Most times, it seems like writing's just writing. You can't really tell what's good and what's bad. A lot of uh, reviewers out there might tell you what, you know, what the number one book is right now and stuff like that. But I think you know when you read good writing, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like Michael Bay films. We'll just use him as an example, okay? Whether you like his stuff or not, there is a... a vast amount of people willing to spend money on things that he produces or directs. And there's something to be said for that. Now, it could be just people don't know good writing, or they don't know good storytelling, or they don't know good movies. So when they see a movie that's just flash and explosions and, and just adrenaline pump the whole thing, they're just caught in the moment. But you need to remember, these are people that are spending their own money on this. They're making that choice to look at something that most people might say uh, is garbage. Uh, but he's making lots of money, okay? So there's an audience for that, that they live a life that you don't live, and the fact that they can go watch a movie and they just get lost in adrenaline or something, they're willing to pay for that sort of thing. So what I'm getting at with this is you know what you like. So just because somebody else doesn't like it, to you it might be great writing. So don't, like, you know what you like, keep going for what you like. Now in saying that as well, branch out, check out things that people are recommending are like holy crap this is amazing like you need to read this this is the best written comic of the year check it out because that's how you'll actually branch out and learn what most people uh consider good writing okay but that's all to say there is a reason why you're attracted to things that you personally like don't lose that that's your unique spark that's the unique thing that i don't want to say separates you from everybody else but it is it's the reason why you go around and you keep looking at anime or manga or uh, European comics or superhero books. You know, There's a reason why certain art tickles you in a certain way. And to be fair, I've read a lot of comics by my favorite artists and the stories were just like, they're, they're okay. But because the art and I just like the person or I just like what they do, it's like it all just comes together and you're just like, yeah, this is really cool. So... Don't really worry about what other people are telling you, what you should and shouldn't read. Stick to what you like. But make the conscious effort at least, you know, once a year, at least, um, to take a look, spend some time, maybe an hour, look online for what the best written comics or the best written novels were this year. And buy it and try it and see what happens. You might hopefully broaden your horizons a bit. Okay? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Nazar is asking a second question. How was it to take your first paid comic-related work? Also, at what time did you feel ready and fully trained to snatch all the comic work out there? Uh, the first time I got paying comic book work, oh man, I think it was maybe even like $20. And I forget how many pages that was for. That may have been like for four or six pages. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I, a lot, I think a lot of people romanticize about this stuff where it's like, I've made it, you know, like somebody's willing to pay me money and all that stuff and I don't want to crap all over that. It's it's any time I get to publish stuff or get paid for stuff like obviously it's a, it's a very it's a solid feeling. It makes you feel uh squared away, you know, kind of like centered in a way like oh wow, this is possible. Which is a great feeling. I don't think you necessarily get that when you go to your day job or whatever, where you go and you sit around with your, or you work with uh, colleagues and and you just collect a check at the end of the week, which is you know very good. It's very awesome stuff. But it's not the same as uh, somebody's coming to you specifically for something that you're doing for them, and like you might not see them after that. Somebody asks you for a commission, or somebody goes, "I need you to draw 22 pages of a comic." You're like, "Okay." They they came to you to bring their vision or their project to life. There's something reassuring and comforting about that. Uh, somebody's willing to put their hopes, dreams, and money into you. Uh, great stuff. So in saying all that, that's how I feel when when I when I 
even today when I get paid client work or or anything and it's very similar to the first feeling that I had for the first project I got um, it just made it seem more real like okay this can happen this this isn't something that was a fluke this isn't something that just just randomly happens it's possible it's very possible and it's it's achievable it's not something that's empty or maybe one day kind of stuff if you get better and you get good and you keep putting yourself out there and you help people and you share and you do some some cool work that people like uh, and that you like and hopefully you can get more people into that that like what you're doing it all starts to snowball and I think the more you kind of push in certain directions the faster that snowball snowball can roll uh, but that's getting into a different question here uh, as for your second one at what time did you feel fully trained to snatch up all the comic work <sighs> so I want to say that one's a little tricky because before I even got my first paying work I I was conceited in the way where I don't know about you guys out there but for me anyway I was one of the few kids in, in you know grade school and even well not high school but grade school where I would draw in class and you might know of these people, and you, you probably was you. And you kind of get known for being that person that draws, right? Nobody, I don't think, you know, really anybody cared that you draw, or maybe they picked on you because of it or something. Uh, you know how you got your, uh, you know, you got the, the people that are popular, you got your jocks, you got your geeks, you got your nerds, you got your, your hipsters, you got your bronies, you got your cosplayers running around. I don't even know if those are <laughs> a thing. But it's like a little pocket that you can fit in. And... From working in that, it's sort of like it builds a confidence in you and, and a pigheadedness. At least it did for me. Not in a nose and ear like, oh, I can draw anything. I don't need to draw kind of thing. Just like a the support I would get from outside sources feeding into that made it seem more real and more like, yeah, I am an artist. Yeah, you know, I can draw stuff. And it just made it seem more like it was... It should happen eventually. It's not that it wouldn't happen. It's I'm just gonna keep you know scribbling around and I'll you know I'll get there. That's what that's what everybody else is telling me. I'm not putting any work into study or research or finding out what the hell all this is about. I'm just getting background support. You know your parents are if you're if you're fortunate enough to have your parents say like oh yeah good drawing and they put it on the fridge and all that stupid stuff. All of that wraps up <laughs> into pushing you in or pushing me into high school where, okay, all of a sudden now there's actual art classes. So, of course, i got to go into that. It's art. I love art. It, it actually, it, in an early age, the, the support, even doing this, when you guys comment and see views and stuff, it still feeds into that stuff when I was younger of support and that it's like a, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel loved, right? So you share. You want more, I want to put more out there because the feedback that I get makes me feel good and makes me want to keep doing more of that. The difference is that I've matured in knowing why that is. Before it was more of a, I just want attention, right? Positive reinforcement, which is great. Now it's, no, no, no. It's much more than that. It's, it's way more important than that. That feeling, it's, it's kind of like giving to people and then that makes you feel good, right? So now it's... Uh, I know that when I was growing up, that positive reinforcement, especially with drawing and creating stuff, uh, even if it was just uh, copying other people's art, it made other people say something positive. And now that I'm able to do that, it's like that's the whole point of it. That's like the circle of it, right? That's the, the, whole, the whole thing going on. But to round it back to your question about at what point did I know that I was ready for comics, all of this was leading me up into thinking that I was always ready for comics. It wasn't until uh, college when I had a, a huge slap in the face in the form of, of a, a rare opportunity that was amazing. I've talked about it before, but I was working uh, my night job while I was at college at a gas station. And I always brought a sketchbook and I'd draw from the muscle magazines and the girly magazines and all that stuff like that uh, for wardrobes and just trying to, trying to understand how to draw women and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and this... Uh, long story short, an artist came in that worked at Marvel, looked at it, said, oh, wow, this is great. What do you want to do with this? And I said, I want to draw comics. And, hey, why don't you come by my house? I can show you some stuff. I thought that was it. That was, I'm good to go. Let's, <laughs> that was, everything was leading up to this. And when I got there, it was like the biggest slap in the face I could ever get where it's, I'm not even remotely close 
to being ready. My, you know, there were so many issues. All of that set into motion. Be trying to think of it differently, like comics is a business. Anybody can draw comics. You can look online at web comics. You can look at mini comics. Everybody from different levels can draw comics, and that's the beauty part of it. But that doesn't necessarily make them good. Good comics, in my opinion, usually come from people that are willing to spend the time to improve their craft and try to understand the craft, try to spread the love about that craft. Uh, you can look at a poorly drawn comic that's well written, and it's awesome. You can look at a poorly written comic that's drawn awesome, and it's an awesome comic. It's just this mix in between. And all of that started to just bubble up, and then I started getting trying to look for free comic book work commission it was my first time uh, probably around the end of high school just before I met this fellow in college that I started actually going on internet forums and asking for work and a lot of the early ones were anthologies and stuff where I'd only have to do a few pages and it was published work right it's that it's the first step in doing it before it was like a, since I was getting all that attention um, that as long as I just keep drawing, comics will come to me, right? And that's that's a horrible way to be looking at it. You just do what you do. You you struggle. You learn. You get better while looking for work. Um, and then eventually, it just got to this point where I started to understand uh, at least the business that I'm in. I'm not fully entrenched, and I always let you guys know that I've never done published work for any of the big boys, uh, so I don't know a hundred percent what it's like to get that phone call in the morning from your editor saying, hey, what are you working on today? What are we going to do? And you're like, this and this and that. And then, you know, scheduling conventions and stuff. Uh, one day it'd be great to experience that. But I'm at a point now where it's like, I understand for independent comics myself where I would like to go. And that's, it, it's a very reassuring feeling. So to answer your, <laughs> to answer your question, hopefully, I think everybody and yourself probably always feels ready to do comics. You might have that slight, but my, you know, I just need to tighten up my anatomy or I'm not ready to do a comic yet because my, my art's not there. You know, that I get it. But all that's really saying is that you're ready. You are ready to do this because you're, you're scared to actually do it. You're just scared to move forward, so you're not moving forward, but you are ready to do it. Are you ready to work for big publishers? I don't know. Do your own comic books or do what I did and I highly suggest it. Go look on forums. Look for people that need artists. Make the step into going, okay, it's not like a, am I ready? Just just tell yourself, I'm, I'm a part of myself here. I'm fucking ready to draw comic books. Get dead serious about that and go draw fucking comic books. Okay? And it's not, it's difficult. But when you tell yourself that you're going to not just do something, you're going to fucking do something... It's serious business. That's, you know, it's it's time to, you know, tighten the belt up, tie the shoes up. And, and what are the, so the anatomy is the problem. That's okay. Now you know, okay, I really need to push that forward. As soon as you start sending that email out to people saying, like, here is my artwork. I would love to work on some comics with you. You probably won't ever hear back from anybody. But if you do get that one email, you better be ready. You better be ready to go, okay, this person is willing to pay me. And if they're not, they're at least willing to put money towards getting it published. Okay? At some, in some way, money is getting funneled into you. Whether it's directly in your pocket, which would be great, and I would highly recommend only doing work for money. But if it's not, hey, you know, just do comics. Once you start working in there, you're going to see real quick, like, oh, God, this guy wants me to draw New York City, and a car is flipping over. Good luck, okay? That's the whole point. People don't get further. They don't get better by just walking through. You've got to trip, scrape your knee, bang yourself up, and keep pushing up, and keep doing that, and keep going, um, and realize, and I know some people don't like to hear this or think about this, but realize that this entire struggle that you're going to have, you might not ever get published by a big company if that's your goal it is a reality and there's I know there's people that might think like well I don't want to put negative thoughts into it or anything to me that's just being uh, silly okay you have to know the realities of something you're going to get into right and the, fir the, the, the moment you realize that your entire life of trying to do comics might not ever amount to anything the moment you're okay with that I think you're good okay because you're willing to do comics regardless of the outcome. Ideally, I'm sure most of us want the, the outcome to be 
yeah, I'm going to conventions every two or three months, and I'm signing books and meeting really kick-ass fans and shaking hands, meeting more people, going to after parties and, you know, talking with editors and just shooting the breeze with my fellow, you know, Marvel artists and just like, hey, you know, all that stuff, that's great, that's great. Or it's maybe it's the indie route where, yeah, I can't wait to go to like these certain conventions every year just so I can meet my fans and shake some people's hands and get more people into my work and maybe I could turn this into a job and you know, all of that should be fun stuff. Like, yeah, like breathe it in because... In my opinion, all this always is in my opinion, but if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to fail going into something, you should make it. (laughs) I know that might seem a little counterintuitive, like you know you're not, but because you know you're not, you will. But it's... I I think I'm being pretty clear here. Hopefully I'm not like overlapping lines. Uh, If you're willing to get nothing out of something, then I think that means you're in it for the right reasons. Uh, That might be an easier way to just say it. I think that just means that if you're willing to get nowhere, whatever that means, you'll at least get somewhere, okay? And that's why I'm a huge believer in personal projects, and that's why I'm I'm making a big push to try to get personal comics out there, to always working on my own stuff, because uh, in my opinion, I'm just tired of waiting for other people to... That might not be the right way, right way to say it. I'm I'm tired of helping other people get closer to where I want to be, and that might sound selfish and stuff, but it's it's not. I appreciate, and I mean, I I take on work that I want to take on as well that I enjoy doing. I won't just take client work because it's 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 work, right? I'd rather just do my own stuff if that's the case. The projects I take on they're enjoyable, and that's what they should be. Um, but in the meantime, it's I can make my own stuff, and you should make your own stuff, and push that stuff, and sell that stuff. Who knows what comes from it? But you're making, it'll be, in my opinion, it might not be the work that pushes you the most, but it'll be the purest form of you in comics that I think you'll ever do. Um, and the only, the only experience I can say that is I did a, a really kick-ass mini-series called The Standard. You guys know all about it. My good friend Will Robson. Tremendous artist helped helped us out towards the last issue and a half, um, because my attention started not my attention but deadlines and you know I wasn't giving it as much attention as I could, um, so we needed Will to come on to uh, help make the book kick ass. I <laughs> this happens all the time when I start rambling. I forget the point that I was going on with the standard there. Um, Anyway, I'm going to keep going here because that one, that's one question, and I keep them. If, I, if it comes back up, I'll bring it back up. But hopefully that answers your question real quick. Also, what time do you feel ready to fully train a snatch comp work out there? Just Cliff Notes version. Feel ready today. Even if you don't feel like it, make an effort. Send one email out today. Go on DeviantArt. That's a great place to check out. Look in the forums and look for people looking for like anthologies or small comics, like six pages or something. Send them a sample of your work. Include comic book pages, okay? If you don't, make that a task to get done. Three comic book pages that you can post on your DeviantArt or something. And get a job. And don't worry about failing, even if it's published work. Uh, They're willing to put their money into you. It's going to give you that experience that you're not going to get on your own. Do that stuff. And build on that. And I think then you'll start to see that you actually are ready and what you need to do to get better. Um, okay, so the next one is for the pre-recorded live stream for July 16th, 2014, uh, by Matador Studio. I hear Tumblr is a great place to publish webcomics because you get instant Tumblr traffic. Tumblr traffic. They have a webcomic theme that I have not had a chance to play with. Uh, I believe it's called Comic Easel. It's better and easier to customize a comic press. And that actually is exciting. Uh, uh, an artist that I, I look up to big time, uh, Dave Raposa, he has a webcomic called Starvale. It doesn't update that often, but he uses like animated GIFs and stuff uh, for some of the panels. It's a tremendous thing. I love his art. I found out about him through Magic the Gathering, the, <laughs> the card game, actually. Um, but I know he posts his comic on there, and I think that's actually his website for it. Uh, I know when I do Jessup King, I already have my comic press set up. It still needs an overhaul. But when you said something there, Matador, about... Tumblr traffic, that's when it started to spark, where it's, 
Yes, I, I, I believe anyway that you should probably have a, uh, a website for your webcomic. Whether you need it when you start, that's debatable. You don't even have uh, an audience yet. But Tumblr is such a huge site, and what you're saying is correct. It can show up in tags and feeds and stuff much easier. And I will be doing that as well. And I'm, what I'm thinking too is even Castle Dracula. I'm not quite sure how I'm releasing that just yet, but I'm going to tr probably use it as a test bed to try it on Tumblr and see what happens. Because yes, it is actually very cool, very slick. It, it works out really well. And if you can still have your own website, you know, there's different things you can have on your website, uh, which still generates that funnel where people go to your website to find out more about you or a, a specific thing about a product and I understand Tumblr in my opinion um, I'm not a big Tumblr user but from what I understand and I'm I'm probably wrong is that you know Tumblr is just like these other social media where it's it's a, a pile a, a, like a ball just packed together with specific kinds of content and when you go there and you find it but you want more um, maybe maybe there, are there prints or maybe is there a free wallpaper so, something I, you know whatever um, maybe there's background comics or so, it's just something and that's when people that are actual fans or they're really more interested in it click and go I've done that I've gone on Tumblr um, Pinterest especially and just looking around to find concept artists like holy hell that's sick and you go in there and you're just like all, all this stuff I'm favoriting and all that but it's that that I think it's that first thing that you want people to do is just get into what you're doing and then f see what else you're doing. Um, and if Tumblr helps that happen, even even better. Because, I mean, when you're doing comics, yeah, I think most people want to just make money off of it. But at the same time, at least for me, it's – I just – if I can make money off it, that's fine. I, I have a job, right? So I, it's not like I need money. Uh, there are people out there that actually need cash. I'm, I'm not one of them, and that's not saying I have a whole bunch of money. Um, but at least for now, anyway, I would much rather have people just read the book, um, which is just as important as making some money back on it. So, you know, you can put that towards uh, your next book and stuff like that. But um, I just want to hear what people think, whether they think it's shit, whether they think it's it's awesome or anything, it's just that feedback of like, okay, now the next one can get better, right? Uh, I think what was this uh, Miyazaki, and I'm gonna butcher up the, the 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 quote he had, but it was something about when he starts a project, he's energized, he's pumped, and it's yes, go go go, and then right at the end of it, he hates that project, and he's looking forward to the next one to go like, okay, I this next one's gonna just make this last one look like shit, and. Uh, I think that's a great way to look at it because that energy, that love, that passion which you pump into the beginning part of the project is what hopefully sustains you all the way at the end. But towards the end, it always, at least for me, is a, it's a grind. It's gross. And you get to the end, you're just like, ugh, finally I'm done this. And you just look on the horizon and you just start going looking at all your other projects. You're like, yeah, all these look sweet. And then you can start doing it again. And I think that's a, it's a healthy way to do it. But um, it's, <laughs> it has nothing to do with that question there. Uh, da, 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 da. How much time do we got left here? Um, okay, I'm gonna try to 40, 50, 20 minutes here, so I'm gonna try to like go pretty quick with these ones. Uh, real quickly, I just wanted to talk about what's going on on the screen right now. So this is the the the, the design that I'm going with here for the the Bat King. Uh, there's that little one nub finger there that I was talking about. And uh, the method I'm doing here is this is all in Manga Studio. Uh, the the paper is actually on 11 by 17. Uh, I like to call it Bristol board. It just looks like the actual Bristol board that you'd use for comics. Rotate it sideways so that you can get more uh, pictures on there. Uh, at least the way I like to draw it. And then all I'm doing here is using, I believe it's a mill pen. And it's pretty small. Sometimes I'll like, get the size pretty big. But I'm just trying to th keep it quick and loose-ish. Once I like something, then I'll just get like a kneadable eraser and just erase it and just tighten up over it. This isn't meant for production, nothing. This is just selling concepts and ideas to myself and, and pushing it forward. What I do with this stuff though, when it's done is I print these out and I put them on my wall so that as I continually design more or as this or as a project uh, and I'm, I'm mostly just doing this right now for my personal stuff I did do this for the standard um, when it first started but uh, you know after a while the design work stops and just goes into production mode of actually doing comics and it's it's a very similar way of doing video games or or movies you know that sort of thing I you guys hear me talk about it all the time I really associate movies and video games with con uh, comic books with that workflow of the beginning is all idea generation, especially for a project, and it's concepts, concepts, concepts. Uh, usually never, ever go with the very first thing you come up with because you'll always get a better design. And so I'll just, boom, make all this stuff up, 
print it out, and then as that's the project that I'm going with, I start to put them up on the wall. And eventually, you're going to run out of walls if you're lucky. <laughs> Or if you got a huge house, then good luck. But that just means you get to draw more. Uh, so you just start putting these pictures everywhere. So when you're looking around, you're always surrounding yourself with this project. And you can see the art. And you never know that. Like, yeah, that one sketch you did of the main character today, you know, you're probably not going to use it. And then, like, uh, two weeks later, you look over and you're like, that's where we're going. But as you're walking around, you look back over and you're like, you know, that first one wasn't bad. I kind of liked something about it. Maybe it turns into something else, right? But it's just surrounding yourself with that project, and it keeps the energy up. Uh, I know a lot of video game studios do this. Movie studios, I believe they do it as well, especially in the beginning when you're doing your concept stuff, where everybody, a part of that team, can come by and look at it. It's a little different when you're working on comics, when you're the artist and you live at home, or in your home, or wherever the hell you live. And, you know, you got your writer somewhere else in the world, and your, you know, your color somewhere else in the world. But if you guys all lived in the same studio, let's just say, Usually the artist will always have a bunch of art on the wall of that project. And that way, you know, when the writer comes in and be like, oh, hey, John, how's, how's uh, issue six going? And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just working on this. They're like, cool. And they walk around and they kind of look around and they see the pictures and stuff and it starts sparking ideas in their head. And that's the whole idea is keeping Kindle going, you know, keeping the spark just – that flame's going to rage in the beginning of a project and then just get the sparks that – hopefully ignite little little bits of heat here and there so that as the project keeps going it doesn't just die on you so with this right here this guy uh, I feel pretty confident with this but who knows what the design will change by the time we get to him in the actual comic but uh, what I'm going to do here is just tightening up the artwork here and then we're going to do like a gray pass over top put the shadows and then I all I did was grab like almost a white brush or a white pen and just kind of like the focus I want on his face. So I just started like putting very minimal highlights on like his teeth and his nose and his eyes. Just so you can, no matter what, that white's going to make you focus on the face. And you'll see it when we get there. Um, okay, so another question was from Claudia Cordirio. <laughs> I know I botched that. Hi, Jonathan. I have one question. Uh, how do you create a double page spread in Manga Studio 5 EX? And this actually surprised me. I could have swore I had a uh, video about this, guys, and I apparently I don't. I do have videos on my channel uh, for Manga Studio 4 EX showing you how to make a double page spread. And for 5, I just drew something that was a double page spread. I didn't actually show how I started that. So I have it on the board. I will release that video this week for you guys. Um, yeah, so you guys can check that out. It'll be a very quick video <laughs> because it's just showing you how to make it. So, you know, I can't imagine it being more than like three minutes. I ramble though, so it could be a 20 minute video on how to literally just make a double page spread. <laughs> um, w. Guilleme? That's totally not how you say it. 98. Uh, what's the name of the Dave Raposa tutorial you were talking about? Okay, I have the. In the comment bar below, guys, just click that, and there'll be a link to his uh, where you can purchase that tutorial. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's, it's very cheap, and even if the one thing that I learned from it, and you guys, I use it all the time now, is making a, I, I think it's a clipping mask. I'm not sure, but in Photoshop, uh, I don't necessarily do it in Manga Studio. I'm not sure if there's a way. I haven't tried, but in Photoshop, uh, I can just tell you guys how to do it because you guys can find it. It's a resource elsewhere, but uh, so like let's say this guy that I'm drawing right now, all I do is I just grab like a color, we'll just say gray, and I fill just him in with gray. If I make a new layer, there's actually an option, and I've never seen it because I never click on that, but you can make a new layer, and what it'll do is every layer you make that's connected to that outline you can never draw outside of it. So what that does is now all of a sudden I can just go crazy and just go, I want blue shoes and just whoosh, draw blue shoes. I can go outside the lines. It might not seem like it's a lot, but it's huge. Uh, it's it's an absolutely uh, huge thing. So I think it was five bucks or ten bucks for the tutorial myself. Just finding that out it was, it was, it was amazing. Um, okay, so now we're going into the pre-recorded live stream for July 23rd. Uh, DS104GR8MS asks... Um, or doesn't ask, he demands I want to see other spectacular Z characters, you had a good start period, 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 finish it so thank you for the <laughs> uh, the kick in the pants I agree uh, I've had this, this discussion with many people of, I have this horrible habit of starting projects and never finishing them, and I've just come to comforts with, that's me unfortunately, I 
I am like a I like to think of myself as an idea man or a concept guy where it's I get that idea in the beginning it's like I need to just turn it into something so that it's okay now it's almost ready to get shoved into a pipeline to actually turn it into something and then that's sort of when it's like but that's not what I like to do because now there's kind of like writing involved and, so, and then it's like ooh Castle Dracula yeah I like, you know I start getting into that um, and saying that my huge resolution, and that's why uh, Castle Dracula is actually moving along so far, is I- I'm, I'm not done with that. I'm just pushing for that, uh, is to, okay, find a project that, I'm, that uh, you know, I, I like and just get it there. And, and the, to be honest with you guys, when I started saying that it's going to be a mini comic, there's a huge alleviation that came off my shoulders, and it was just, okay, this ain't that bad. Where it's, I'm not really looking to make a big, massive thing. Uh, I don't quite know the art style just yet, as you guys have seen it, because I don't want to spend too long with them. But the idea that I can get them out quicker makes it so it's like, all right, I don't have to spend as long with this project. So I know that when the new and shiny comes, I'm not waiting a year till I have to get to that. All that's to say is, yes, there will be more spectacular Z stuff coming. I can't tell you when, but I love the little characters. I still got one on my table. I still have my... Uh, uh, I don't even know if you guys if you've seen them, but if you guys follow me on Facebook, if you go to my uh, fan page, uh, what's it called, Jonathan Rector Illustration or something like that, you guys just go to my website, JonathanRector.com, at the top, uh, find me online, and there's a link to my fan page there. But there's uh, I've actually got like four other characters designed. Um, the blue one, I don't even I think there's a video for that. Could be wrong, but uh, I got the blue guy. All the, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that was already put into that. Uh, I will get back to it. I'll just leave it at that. So I appreciate the support on that. Uh, Neil Edwards. Hi, Jonathan. I love the pencil brush. Could you put the settings up on your site, Twitter, or would you be able to download the brush from your site? And I just want to say thank you, Neil. This is kind of going in really quickly. Uh, I have finally launched a Patreon account. And you guys, you know, you can see that right at the bottom there. Uh, if you guys wanted to head over to patreon.com forward slash Jonathan Rector, all the support you guys send me there is is more than welcome and appreciated. It all directly goes back into YouTube um, and personal work. So if you guys want to see more Castle Dracula done, if you guys would like to see more Spectacular Z, Squirrel God, God Slayer, um, Jessup King, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other, Star Lord, um, what other stuff we got? A whole bunch of books. <laughs> uh, any kind of support you guys can give me, 100% of it, like I said, does go back. I don't use it to buy food or anything like that. Like I said, I have a job. What that support does is it lets me, or it helps me take less client work. Uh, it just makes the transition for myself easier because you guys are helping me out and helping me get there. And I, anybody that's willing to do that, thank you so much. That's, that's huge. If you were to tell me that somebody's willing to give me a dollar a month, um, for me just to do what I'm doing and it's kind of like a yes I like it and make more of it please or yes I want to see some of these things I want to see what your comic book your personal work looks like I want to see if it's shit I want to see if I like it that sort of thing that's that's you know it's um it's an actually it's a really special feeling to tell you the truth guys um, I've gone to a few con- comic book conventions especially New York was a huge one where I met some of you guys and girls out there, you guys actually asked me if I was, you know, Jonathan, and if I did, and I was like, yeah, okay, who are you? You know, and it's like, oh, you know, I watch your stuff, and it's just like that sort of thing is just, I don't know, guys. It's it's a very special feeling. So, thank you, thank you. And the only reason I got the Patreon is I heard a lot of people talking good things about it, and some of you were even asking about it. So I do have, I believe, right now, it's I've only got four Patreons, but that's fine. Um, you know, most, like, two of the guys on there, they're actually, you know, throwing some, some serious money at it. So it's, it's, it's important to me to keep this stuff going for those that are, are willing to, um, are fortunate enough to be able to help me out. And uh, I, I can't ever say thank you enough. But anyway, if you wanted to head over there, um, this is all going back to the brushes question. What I've done is anybody that supports me on Patreon, uh, right now there's there's three th- levels that you can actually purchase if you're interested. Uh, you can actually donate anything. If you wanted to, you could go there right now and put one penny. And anybody that's a, a Patreon, they'll get a free link to uh, the five brushes that I use currently in Manga Studio 5, pencil brushes. And there's a little note in there to play with the sizes and the, the shade of gray and stuff that you 
that that you can use just to see if there's one that mimics the kind of style you're going through. So for those of you that are interested in those brushes, just head on over to John or patreon.com forward slash Jonathan Rector and you guys can get those. Um, the other two or the other, th what was it? I put, there's three options here. Like I said, the one's just a dollar a month and you can cancel these subscriptions at any time. Uh, you only get more stuff from this stuff. I don't hide anything from it. Um, but that dollar a month just says, you know, thanks for doing what you're doing. Um, and it can also get you that link for the um, pencils. The second one is $10. And what that does is I can give you a, a critique, a personal one-on-one -on -one critique of a piece of art. Um, and if I can help you with that, even better. And then the last one so far is $30. And that gets you, uh, for one hour on Google+, Plus. you and I, we can hang out, chat, talk about anything art-related, comic book-related, that um, maybe you need me to look at a script or help you draw something if I can. I can do that. Um, but it's personal, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's not publicly shared or anything like that. Um, and if I can help you out with that, awesome. And like I say, all of that just goes back into doing all this stuff. So thank you. Thank you again. And that's my, <laughs> my pitch for that. Uh, okay, let's see if we can hammer through these last ones real quick. Uh, this one's for the pre-recorded live stream on July 30th. I will say real quick, I've noticed that, un unfortunately, a lot of the stuff I'm posting on YouTube is uh, the live stream stuff. Uh, some client work that I had has eased up, so things are going to get a little bit back to normal, so we can start getting more content that's just like this, or just generic scribble stuff, where it's not just an hour long of um, just, just things, you know, going on. Austin Draws uh, says, Sorry if I'm asking many questions, but I have always had one question. How do you draw from a human anatomy book, human anatomy book like George Bridgman's Guide to Drawing from Life? And I know that might seem like a really easy question where it's like, well, just draw from it. Um, but there's two things that I found that helped me when I was doing it is there's words in these books. Read those words and reread them and see what the words are telling you about what the picture's showing. The pictures are just drawings. It's up to your, you and your mind to dissect it and break it up and try to understand it better, right? It's how do you process a drawing and break it down, even though if it's just like a structurally sound drawing of just like boxes, like in Bridgman's case, you still have to understand like why is that a box like that, right? And the words actually help you there. And I know it might sound a little weird because a lot of people, they'll grab anatomy books and they don't read the words that are in there. They don't, they don't do that. And it always boggles my mind. I don't understand it. Like, Yes, I understand doing like studies where you look at art and you redraw it and you learn the, the flow, the rhythm, the um, how you get from point A to B. You, you sort of get like a muscle memory and understanding how that works, which is key. But if you're doing something specific like learning or trying to understand anatomy, um, these books are very important because what they'll let you do is if you read them, you can understand them and it'll help you dissect a little bit better. So just read the words, keep drawing, keep copying those books. And I've always found the best, the best way to learn from anatomy books is dedicate time to just draw from that book. And give yourself a deadline, like uh, two weeks, a month, two months, whatever time you got, um, ten minutes a day. I want to draw every single picture in this book. I want to read every single picture. If you have to sit down and you only have ten minutes a day and all you can do is read on the left, that's all you can do. You can't draw. Good luck. You'll probably find a way to draw, but do that. And once it's done, maybe give it a little bit, maybe a week or a month or something, and then do that all over again to the point where you start to, you know, it just becomes like, okay, you, you'll, you'll understand. You'll just get it like that. And then keep those books near you because even today, if I'm working on something, I've always got the, for me, it's the Michael Hampton's Guide to, uh, what is it? The Michael Hampton's Guide from Design and Invention, I believe it's called. I believe that's what it's called. And uh, I always keep that near me because it's an awesome reference where I can just look and s see, like, oh, that's, the, okay, that's where the tricep connects. You know, like, I still forget my anatomy. Um, so keep those books near you. And don't be lazy. Open them. <laughs> Open them if you're having problems with something. Okay? Uh, and this, okay, so we had one question for the Castle Dracula pinup um, by Kevin Phillips. Very nice to see you back on the scribbles. I always enjoy these. Very engaging feel to this new style, though I love your strong rendered ink work too. By the way, is there such a thing as digital mini comics, say in the form of a PDF? Finally, have you been watching The Strain on FX? Grim new spin on an old theme. Uh, your Castlevania story reminds me. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, no, I haven't. I've never even actually heard of that. Um, I don't watch too, too much TV. Netflix, I do, you know, some of the TVs that are on there. But uh, no, I haven't. I'll uh, make a note and take a look at that, though. As for uh, are there mini comics in digital form? A hundred percent. 
most people I know, you kind of get them at conventions and you just sell a mini comic. Um, but in today's day and age, I think that's kind of, I don't want to say silly. It's not something I'm looking for. I would rather have like this come out and be accessible to a wide variety of people if I can find a way to do so. So yes, there will be a PDF version of this. Uh, there will also probably be, if I can, I believe there's a Kindle thing you can do. I'm not quite sure. i got to look into that. Um, there's going to be the printed version. Uh, there will also be a printed artist edition, uh, which usually comes with like a custom sketch and stuff. Uh, and there will probably also be... I'm not quite sure. I might even just do like a, a make a torrent and upload it for those of you that just want to get this stuff for free. You know, if if people are going to torrent a book, awesome. It's it's free marketing. <laughs> I'm not, and, and it's a weird thing to say because obviously, like I just said, I'm asking for money for this stuff. But to get people to just pirate it for free, that's one thing. But the torrent version also lets you do other things, guys. Like I can advertise on that. It's free advertising, so it's not necessarily a bad thing off the crack. But yes, hopefully, I'll have a way that you guys can get this to you in however way you like to do so. Um, okay, so I got two real questions or quick questions here. I got to try to be quick with this. I only got like a minute left or two minutes. This is from the Cover Process uh, thumbnails video. Uh, Kevin Phillips asks, "When are your live streams?" My live streams are every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and those are on live stream. Head on over to my website, JonathanRector.com. Click on the top of uh, "Find Me Online," and you can see the live stream button right there. You guys can go check that out. There's tons of videos that are already up there. Um, you guys have probably all seen them if you're watching me on YouTube, but uh, you guys can always check that out there. And then the last question is, is by Riss Hawkins. Hey Jonathan, I'm working in Manga Studio 5EX. I remember a long time ago you talked about using a workflow that consisted of doing the roughs in Manga Studio 5, then printing them out using a light box or a window to transfer them onto an artboard, and then do the penciling and inking traditionally. Uh, this might sound stupid, but you can't figure it out. Um, okay, so really quickly, see if I can get this in here real quick. All you need to do is make two documents that are 8.5 by 11, Okay, and then divide your 11 by 17 in half, copy each one and paste one individually in each one. What you're doing is you're pasting them into uh, a, a piece of paper each, because if you put two 8.5 by 11 pieces of paper together, it's 11 by 17. That's all you got to do, okay? So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all your support and all your time. And again, check out my Patreon account if you want to check out those brushes or if you anything like that. Any kind of sharing, uh, thumbs up, plus oneing, you know, all that cool stuff. Always, always, always a treat. And I appreciate, again, all the support. So until the next video, keep reading comics, keep making comics. I'll see you soon.